Within Falcon, we have a powerful sample engine that allows us to perform basic sample playback, time stretching, pitch shift, slicing, granular, and even multi-granular synthesis. And we're going to take an in-depth look at each of these in future videos, but in this video, we're going to create a foundation of understanding by starting with the basic sampling oscillator and the features of the sample edit window. This will then help us to have a better understanding of the sample edit window and its parameters, which will then serve us well when we move on to the more advanced sampling oscillators. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can go about loading our samples or sample oscillators within Falcon. So one of the first ways or methods that we can use is by coming to the oscillator browser here, then we can see we have the sample folder. And if we expand that out, we can see all of the different types of sample oscillators. And in this video, we're going to be specifically working with the most basic straightforward sample oscillator. So we could then click, hold and drag that to the mapping editor. And then as we move that to the top, that's going to be set to cover all of the keys here from C minus two to G eight. Now at this point, if I scroll down a bit here, we can see this is our sample edit window. It says no sample, drag and drop a sample here. So we could then come to our browse section. I'm going to come to places, my desktop. Here's a sample folder. Then I can drag that. I'm going to stop the playback here. This, uh, automatic audition is highlighted. So whenever I click on a sample, it's going to play back. If you don't want that to happen, just disengage that. But now we have our basic sample oscillator loaded along with a sample. Now, a quicker way that we could go about doing this is I'm going to select the key group here and press delete on the QWERTY keyboard to get rid of that. We can just drag a particular sample in directly onto our mapping editor. I'm going to stop the auditioning. And then now we have, if I scroll down here, our basic sample oscillator and our waveform loaded. So that's of course much quicker. You would just navigate within the browser to the specific audio sample that you'd like to load, drag that onto the mapping editor and place it on whatever group of keys that you'd like. All the way at the top, it's going to uh, set that sample to playback across all keys. And then now we're loaded here and ready to go. If I use my controller, I'm working with the Atom. I can then play that sample back. Now, another thing to keep in mind at or keep in mind of is the root key. And when I dragged that sample in, it placed it on D3 for the root, but I want that to be on C3. So I'm going to come up to the top of the mapping editor and just click hold and drag that down to be C3. And we can see that that changed. So wherever, whichever key is highlighted in red, that's going to be your root key. And you can always come to root, click hold and drag up or down to change that. Or you can double click to manually input a value. Now, since we're specifically going to be working with this basic sample mode and the sample editor window, window that's all that we're concerned about in this tutorial, I'm going to clear everything else out so we can just have a very basic view. So I'm going to hide the modulation panel. I'm going to hide the mapping editor. We've got that mapped as we'd like. I'm going to hide the uh, program panel, the layer panel, as well as the key group panel. So all I really want to see is the oscillator section. And I'm actually going to come down to the bottom and drag this out so we can get a better view of this horizontally. And just keep in mind that when we drag the audio sample in, it's going to automatically set it to the basic sample oscillator, which is labeled sample. If we were to click and hold or right click on that naming there, we can choose one of the other sample oscillators pretty, pretty easily, just like so. So if I wanted the Urcam stretch, then I can choose that, then that's loaded up but I'm going to right click and come back to the basic sample. And then I'm going to again, come down to the bottom and pull that down. So at this point we can play back our sample. And when played back uh, on C3, 
this is going to be our root note and this is going to be playing back the sample at its original pitch. Anything that we play above or below that sound will um, be pitched up or down and the playback speed will also change in relation. So if I play further down, then that's going to play back slowly. Okay, and then if you're using Falcon, then this is probably a no-brainer to you, so we're not going to spend much more time talking about uh, the partic this particular sample engine, and we're going to move on to focusing on the parameters and features of the sample edit window. But before we do that, just know that if we come back to one of these other sample engines, say the stretch, this is going to allow us to play the sample at a higher or lower pitch while keeping the same playback speed. Okay, now, now this is C3, the original. If I come lower. Okay, so that's what the stretch is gonna allow you to do and you can adjust some settings here to achieve a higher quality. We can also come to the Urcam stretch here. And um, so if I play back at the original pitch, we can see that speed. If I play an octave up, we're still playing at the same speed, but an octave up. If I come down an octave, still the same thing, same speed, but at a lower octave. Okay, so let's come back to the basic sample mode. And again, I'm going to expand out the bottom. Okay, so let's just start from the top and cover the sample edit window and make our way across that. And uh, if you noticed, this was closing out. So if you click once on the sample header here, then it's going to close out the sample oscillator. We also have a power button that we can click on and on, on and off to engage and disengage this oscillator we have this plus symbol where we can come and add an additional oscillator. It could be one besides the sampling oscillator. So if I wanted to add the additive oscillator, we can do that. And it's going to be on the same key group, but I'm going to hit the X to close that out. Then moving over to the right, we have a sample information button. So if I click on this, then we can see more information about the particular sample that we're working with. So at the very top, we have the file location or the file path to where this is stored. This is on my desktop in a folder labeled sam samples, and we can see the sample name. We can also see the bit depth, the sample rate, whether it's stereo or mono. We can see the length of the file as well of, as the length of the file in frames and its size. So we can just toggle that on by clicking this icon here. Next to that, we have show oscillator parameters. So if we click that, we can show the different parameters that are available for this sample, this basic sample oscillator. And this is gonna to apply to any sample oscillator that we're using. So if I change this to the, say the multi-granular, these are the different parameters that are available for, for it. And you can see that this is active. If I disengage that, then those go away. So this is going to apply to whatever uh, type of sample oscillator you're working with. And for the basic sample oscillator, we don't have many options here. We basically have a sample start, and this is going to be based on a percentage uh, that's tied in with your start and end markers, as we can see here on either side. So if we were to say set this to 50%, then when I trigger, we should start playback right in the center of the sample. Okay, if I were to change that to around 25%, then we should start a quarter of the way through here. Okay, so we can adjust with the dial here by clicking and dragging or using your mouse wheel when you hover. You can also double click and manually enter in a value. We next have the interpolation mode. So when we play a pitch that is either above or below the root key, 
the the sample's original pitch, there is some processing that's involved in that. So by default, we're going to use the standard mode. We can also choose a lo-fi mode, which is going to require less processing. If we choose best, then that's going to be a bit more overhead for processing the interpolation of our sample above or below its original pitch, which we've set to C3. And next in line, we have allow streaming. So if Falcon is set up to allow streaming and we engage this button, then it's going to stream our sample from the hard drive versus loading it into RAM. Okay, now next to our oscillator parameter icon, we have a drop-down menu for managing our presets and f files, our audio samples. So at the very top, we have load preset, save preset. And for this, actually, and note, if you click on this bar above here, it's going to make the sample oscillator go away. So if we click there once, then that's going to come back. But I'm going to go to the... Um, Let's see, let's go to the granular and I'm going to adjust all of these top parameters and move them to the right. And then let's come to that same menu and save that preset. Let's call that test. I'll go ahead and click save. And we can see that that's now listed here in this drop-down menu. So if I come to the factory and choose default, what this means is that whenever we're working with the ERCAM granular and we've made some settings that we really like and we want to uh, save to apply to different audio samples in the future, we can use this save preset. And then whenever we are working with the ERCAM granular, we can come to the drop-down menu here and select those test settings. And as you can see, all of these parameters are turned to the right, which is what I had set them at. So that is what the uh, load and save preset are for, because we could choose load preset and it's going to navigate to our uh, settings folder or preset folder, wherever we have that set up for Falcon on our system directory. But I'll go ahead and cancel out Let's come back to the basic sample. Next up, we have copy to clipboard, paste from clipboard. So basically, we can copy the settings. I probably should just stay on. I should have just stayed on this granular. So um, if I, again, adjust these settings, And then let's copy to clipboard. Let's come to the plus and add another ERCAM granular. We can come here and paste from clipboard. Just notice the parameters here. Those will then change to what we have set in this original one that I copied from. Okay, so I'm going to close out the new one here and come back to this. And let's be sure that it's going to be safe for me to go back to that basic sample one. Yeah, so I think we're okay now. I'll click and hold and come back to the basic sample oscillator. And so next we have save sample. Now, with this one, if we've made some changes to the audio sample and we'd like to overwrite the original sample and save those changes, and it's going to be a destructive edit, so say if I select the center area here, right click, and let's crop that. So if we'd like to change that, make save this change and overwrite the original file, then we would choose save sample. So this is going to be destructive to your original audio file. So just please remember that. If you'd prefer to create a new file, you want to keep your changes, but you also want to keep your original, then you would want to choose Save Sample As, then you're going to get an Explorer window or a Finder on the Mac. Then in this way, you can choose a new location to save that uh, audio file and still keep your original. So I'm going to right click and undo that crop. And what do we have next here? We've seen Save Sample, Save Sample As. Uh, save sample with playback options. So this basically, we have start and end markers within the sample edit window. So if I trigger 
and hold the pad on the atom here, then we're going to play all the way through to the end marker. But we could also come to the start marker, drag that here. We can come to the end marker, drag that here. Then when I trigger, we're just going to play this particular portion. And we could also click, hold and drag to select a region, right click and come all the way down to the bottom of our contextual menu and create a loop. Let's say an alternating loop that's going to go forward and backward. So now if I press and hold a pad, we're going to cycle back and forth for as long as I'm holding the pad and then release. So now that we have changed the position of our start and end markers, and we've created a loop here, when we come to this menu, this is what this applies to. If we choose to save the sample with playback options, then it's going to include the start and end marker positions, as well as that loop that we created and overwrite those settings to the original file, because this is save sample with, if we'd like to create an entirely new version and keep our original sample without the changes that we've made, uh, then we would want to choose save sample as. So this is going to create an entirely new file with these playback settings. If we'd like to remove our loop, then we can always come down to the bottom and choose delete loop here. And also know that while we can come to the start and end kind of flags here, I find they're a little bit tricky sometimes to adjust. So a simpler way, I've never had this much of an issue before, but a simpler way is we can click once, set our playback cursor, and then set start marker using current position, then it's gonna set that there. Okay, and we can do the same thing with the end marker. We can click, hold and drag, but we can also set our playback cursor there, right click, set end marker using current position. Okay. So what else have we got here? That's everything within this drop down menu. Then we just have left and right arrows for previous and next, and that's going to allow us to navigate between the different presets that we've already taken a look at that are going to be contained within our preset folder for the Falcon. Now, next in line, we have a display ruler up at the very top. And by default, this is going to be in seconds, but we can always change that to be a couple other options. So if we right click on this display ruler, we can choose samples or we can choose beats, but I'm going to set that back to seconds. Now we also have some zoom controls within the sample edit window. So if I were to hold down alt, and then use my mouse wheel to scroll up and down, then that's going to zoom in and out horizontally. And we can really get in here pretty close. And then if I were to hold down shift while using the mouse wheel, we're going to zoom in vertically on our waveform. Now, if we've adjusted our start and end markers, we do have the option within the contextual menu to right click, come down to the zoom, and then we can choose to zoom to start. That's really going to zoom in on that start marker. This could be useful if you're having clicks and pops, say you've set up a loop and you're having clicks and pops, or you're just playing back regularly, then you can come in and make really fine adjustments to, to the position of the start marker. And we also have that option for the end marker as well. So if I come to zoom to end, then now you can see we've zoomed in really tightly on the end marker. So I'm going to hold down alt and then just zoom out with the mouse wheel. And I'm going to set our start and end markers back to their original positions. And then we've already seen some of the contextual menu here, menu here but we're going to cover the rest of everything. Maybe we won't look at exactly everything because things like normalized, what we know 
This is going to normalize our audio sample. We've got reveal in browser. So when we choose that, it's going to open up the Explorer window and we can see our sample here. Uh, if you're on the Mac, it's going to open up the Finder. Let's right click again. We can undo and redo. We've got cut, copy, and paste. So if I do have a selection made to our audio sample, then those are going to be available. And below that, we have select all, deselect all. We've already seen crop, delete, normalize, silence. So if I have a particular reg region that I'd like to silence, then I can select it, choose silence. Then we can see nothing will be played back for this area here. Okay, I'm going to undo that silence. What have we got? We can reverse. And actually, let's work with a different sample. Got a little ping pong ball here, so. Okay, so say we'd like to reverse this. We can come down to reverse. which sounds pretty cool. What else have we got? Fade in, fade out. So let's undo that reverse and select, say from halfway about here, say we'd like to have a fade out for that area. Fade out. Okay, we can see that. We can just keep on going with that to get it to how we'd like, but I'm just going to undo those. All right. And so fade in, that's obvious. Just, we could just select the region that we'd like to fade in or fade out. Now, if we don't have any particular region selected, it's just going to apply that action to the entire audio sample. So if I choose fade in, you're going to no notice the, the entire uh, sample is going to be affected. Okay. We'll undo that. Okay. We've seen the zoom. We've got apply effects. So with this, we can actually use any of Falcon's effects and apply this directly to our audio sample. So we've got these listed by type here. We've got delays reverb let's try spark verb i'll click okay i can see the waveform did change here so okay Okay, so we can hear that. I just probably wasn't changing enough of the settings with those uh, previous uh, other effects. So let's undo apply that DSP. Undo apply DSP. What else have we got? Apply effects, play selection. So this is basically going to play back a particular section that we may have selected. And there is a shortcut key for that, so Control plus Spacebar. If I don't have a specific selection made, it's going to play back the entire selection. And while it's playing back, you can see Stop Playback, Playing Selection. So if you're working with a particularly long sample, then you can come in and choose that. Now, we've already taken a look at Reverse. So when I do that, it reverses our entire sample, but we can also choose to change playing direction to reverse. Now this is not going to reverse our sample, it's just going to reverse the direction. So if I make that selection now, we're essentially starting from the end marker and then playing to the start. In order to change that back, we could just come back down to the bottom, change playing direction to forward. Okay, what else have we got? 
we've seen set start and end markers to current position set as one shot. So by default, when we load these samples, um, I'm going to need to hold down the pad or the key on your controller in order to uh, play back the entire sample. If I press and release, the whole sample will not be played. And uh, this is essentially related to, let's show our mods panel. And we can see our, our release setting essentially is set to 50 milliseconds. So one thing we could do is just raise this up. And then if I press and release, it's gonna play that back. Okay, but when we have this at the default, say, I'll just leave that at 31. Um, actually, I wanna take that up just a little bit more. Okay, 1.66 milliseconds. I'll press and release. Okay, we can see that that's not gonna play all the way through. Uh, but if I right click and set this to one shot, I can press and release and it's going to play our entire sample back. Okay. And I think maybe we have one more. We have, we can disable one shot by once again, right clicking and um, accessing the contextual menu. All right. And so we've seen the loop kind of at the beginning of the, this video, but I'll just cover that again really quickly. If we have a particular area and let's actually too many ideas. change our sample and let's say we'd like to loop this last portion of our sample we can select whatever area we'd like to loop right click come all the way down to the bottom and choose create loop let's do just a straightforward loop so it's going to play to the end then go back to the beginning play to the end go back to the beginning so we'll select that we can see left and right markers indicating the beginning and end of our loop region. So I'm gonna change the sample start time to, to be closer towards the end so we don't have to listen to the whole sample. And as long as I hold, it's gonna play back that region that I set up. And if we'd like to set up a crossfade, we would just right click and enable crossfade. So now you can see we have these brackets here and I can click and hold to adjust the length of our crossfade. Yes, 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 yes. And that can just kind of help clean things up so it doesn't sound as modulated or mechanistic. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to remove your crossfade, just right click and disable crossfade. If you'd like to remove your loop, just right click and delete loop. Okay, and so this has been an in-depth in look at the basic sample oscillator within Falcon, as well as the sample edit window and its various controls. And um, I wanted to start off with something simple here, because once we move to, say, the um, granular, then you can see we have a lot more parameters that are available for it down at the bottom, but we still are going to have these same controls in the sample editor uh, menu that we can make use of as far as managing our preset, the sample, saving it, um, and sample information, hiding and viewing those parameters at the bottom, and particul particularly, which could be incredibly useful for um, advanced editing in combination or in tandem with the grain parameters, is our contextual menu and using these, uh, you know, th thinking about applying effects in combination with the controls that are available when, within the granular uh, section here, you can come up with some really awesome stuff. So when we move on to these other more advanced sampling processors, we're not going to then need to cover these controls here or not really so much within the contextual menu unless until we get to some sound design stuff, we're going to play with these and see what we can create. 
Okay, so I'll, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next tutorial.